I'm not quite sure if you can hear me. Hear you quite well. Since I'm precisely doing nothing at the moment, I can't see how you can consider that I'm extremely well. I've never been known to say nothing. I couldn't say something of value, and I'd much rather say nothing. Who is it speaking to? This is most extraordinary. Yes, then really again, fun, being dead is an extraordinary business. Especially yes. when you're talking to people on earth who are supposed to be alive and are very much dull and dim and dead in consequence. Extraordinary business is it. Yes. There seems to have been a great deal of interest in my work space. Quite a little interest in this one. Oh, sequestrants. Quite clear. Mm. Oh, sequestrants. Precisely in consequence, nothing of Seems to be the general rule. Yes. Many people from this side invariably try to say a great deal and in consequence say very little. The simple reason that we haven't utilize this extraordinary method of communication. Why they cannot invent something more congenial, more suitable, more successful than I can't imagine. I suppose one must be grateful for mediums. It's a pity that mediums have to be human beings, because they're so difficult, so complex. Take this medium, for instance. If you would see this medium, as I do from this side of life, you'd realize what we have to contend with. Well, we can hear you quite well, Fred. Fred, may we have your name? Why are you so concerned with my name, Julia? What I say is far more important than my name. Yes, but you'd be surprised. My name got me into a great deal of trouble when I was on your side. Oh, never mind. Yes, it's very safe for other people, you see. They ask who it is, and we sometimes, but we can't tell, you see. You can tell them it's Colonel Bogey.
because how can another person be responsible for that which I want to convey to you with clarity and intelligence? No individual can ever act as an instrument in the true sense. I remember way back, centuries ago, now I must seem, if not to you, to me, when I used to try to get people to portray characters that I had created, and to say lines that I had given them, it used to sound often so strange to me, as if they were not my lines at all. And yet they were. The people very seldom seem to have their proper intonation, very seldom seem to be able to put the weight behind the right word, to convey the meaning behind the sentence, to give it authority and tone and colour. And very people were, with all due respect, very poor mediums. The same applies here, using a medium to communicate with you from the side of life. It's like using an actor on your side to try and use that person to impersonate, to give through, as it were, oneself, or that which one has written in the case of my plays. All very confusing. Oh, you might as well know. My name is Wild. Oscar Wilde. Oh, I've read your books. I you? Yes. How fortunate you are. Pardon? Yes. I say how fortunate you are to have read my books. Yes, I have. Yes, yes. yes. oh, good gracious. I've got some of your books. I've had some of these. A lot of your books. I, I suppose I should be highly flattered to know that you've read my books and well, you've actually I, got one or two, I, which I, I means that others suggest that you bought them, which is very nice to know. Not that I'm getting any of the royalties. No doubt you belong to a very good library. Good <laughs> <laughs> well, can you tell us some of your life on the outside now, please, what you're doing? Well, I must admit it's a relief to be asked to discuss one's life over here in preference to one's life on Earth. Because, in any case, my life when on Earth is pretty well known among the gossip mongers. <laughs> <laughs> if I were to say to you that my life here is not un unlike my life on Earth, you'd probably be very horrified. But it happens to be perfectly true. And I have no regrets about it whatsoever. I'm perfectly happy and perfectly contented. And I live a life of delicious sin. <laughs> But only as the world sees sin, because as the world sees sin, it is no longer sin here to be human and to be natural. But on earth, to be natural is to be sinful. But over here, one can be sinful because it is natural. But the world has strange ideas of sin. I live a natural, natural like existence here, and I'm perfectly happy. Yes. I have my friendships, and I have my friends. Because you can't have friendships without friends, obviously. Mm -hmm. What an extraordinary couple you are. Why? Well, I've heard about you. How you strive to reach people on your side, to enlighten them and to uplift them. But you think they're going to be any happier for that? Having seen so many people, I think they're much happier in their miseries and in their darkness and then they are in light. You show illumination to a person, they start screaming like mad and run like mad to escape from the illumination. <laughs> Still, no, they have never so I know, I'm being facetious. <laughs> but then, of course, I do realize that there are many people in your world who could be helped by this truth, because it is truth. But at the same time, there are many to whom it might even be a bad thing. Look how happy some of them are with their saints. What a pity to take them away from their saints. Mm -hmm. They'll be lost. They'll be like children in the wilderness. There's be pity in the Oh, I wouldn't say that. It gives them great happiness. Why take away something from a child that amuses it and keeps it quiet? After all, do you want the child screaming because he's lost his toy? Yes. Knowledge comes with adult life, so we're told. That's why so many adults are like children. They haven't really grown at all, have they? What an extraordinary pair you are. <laughs> and I quite agree with you. I look upon really people like children in the way of the knowledge. And they, how they express their knowledge. So many of those on your side who profess evidently 
to know this knowledge, to know this truth, to know about communication, to know about life after death. So many of them seem to me rather like overgrown children. They haven't really benefited from their knowledge. Indeed, it seems to me that some would have been better without it. Yes, there is a point there. Some would be better without it. In the way you do use it. You know, you don't want to attack this subject as if you were some missionary going out into darkest Africa. You might end up in the cooking pot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've ended up in more than one cooking pot. <laughs> I'm quite sure you have, and I'm quite sure the people who stirred the cooking pot for you have been spiritualists. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. You'd be much safer among the wildlife. Yes, I agree with you. These spiritualists, you know I've been to many of their so-called meetings and seances. Do you know if it were not rather sad, it would be highly amusing. I've been to some of these seances, these meetings, and really, it's so, so pathetic. Mm -hmm. I've seen dear little old women in Bayswater standing up or waiting, or at least so they thought, thinking that no doubt they were being controlled by some great entity or soul from this side. Their imagination has run right in Bayswater. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I'm quite with you. So much harm is done by these strange creatures. Why is it that the women of sixty turn to this sort of thing and become most extraordinary characters in consequence? They would have been much happier pushing a bassinet up Bayswater Road. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they've They've had no bassinet before. Possibly. Yeah. Well, they certainly haven't given, given birth to children, but they've given birth to some very weird creations purporting to come from our side of life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing on that side of life, Darren? Why should I tell you what I'm doing? Oh, we have an interest in life. <laughs> Actually, seriously, I'm still writing. Mm -hmm. oh, and I'm still having my plays performed. Mm -hmm. And I am often called upon to go down into the lower spheres to help. Strange, no doubt, you may think that I should be called to those fears oh, to help. Right. Possibly you might even yeah. interpret as well, probably I'm more suitable to help people on those fears because I haven't progressed very much myself. But actually, I'm very much in tune with all peoples. My mind, I trust, yeah. gives me the entree, even if my reputation does not. Oh, I don't know. I think your books were... My reputation does not worry me. But it seems to worry a hell of a lot of people on your side. Your books are very valuable in knowledge. Even there, more money has been made out of my reputation since my death than ever I was able to make out of my plays, which goes to say that sin is very successful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You see, Mr. Wilde, you always had a very open mind, didn't you? My mind was always wide open. It was above the average, you see. My mind was always very wide open, and as you say, above the average. Can you tell me what the average is, and how open a mind should be? I was always ready to receive inspiration. Indeed, I might say that my most successful works were due to the fact that I had an open mind, and in consequence much was poured through it of inspiration, uh, which was highly successful, and I feel sure that if it were not for the fact that I was high-minded, we wouldn't have had perhaps some of the successful works that I was able to perform. But of course, all this is a matter of dispute among many people. One man's rat poison is another man's meat. No, I think every writer is inspired in some ways to a certain extent. Oh, but don't take away our own personality and our own oh, no, originality, no. my dear, please. please. No, no. But like, um, I'm quite prepared to admit I was inspired. I was always an inspiring figure. <laughs> in fact, now I've become almost all inspiring, possibly because I'm dead. <laughs> 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 Wild, um, you wish me to drop the flippancy and be serious? No, I'm not. 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 I'm not.
no, but to be serious is often to be boring. So many people, when on earth, were so serious that they couldn't fail to be utterly boring, and I refused to join such a gathering. No, please don't drop it, because it wouldn't be you if you weren't like that. This I do deliberately, because there will always be people who say, how do we know that this was Oscar Wilde? And so I'm expected to come back very much the same, the same oh. attitude towards life and towards people, and to say the same sort of things that would be expected of me. So, for your sakes, I do this, because I know, poor dear, you're struggling so desperately hard to convince. Mm -hmm. And if I can assist you to convince, then I shall be doing some good work that may wipe out some of my blots. Oh. Um, Mr. Wilde, yes. since you've been on the other side, have you, have you learnt anything? Um, I'd be a most strange person if I hadn't learned something after being here so long. Mm -hmm. We all learn, whether we like it or not, whether we are apt pupils or not, we all learn, no matter how bad the teacher. Were you surprised when you found yourself? Nothing has ever surprised me, and certainly nothing would possibly surprise me in regard to God because he was a person who was always doing the most surprising things if one was to believe all that one read in the Bible. In fact, he seemed such an extraordinary character that he became interesting in consequence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, how actually did you find yourself in your past so far? Can you sort of describe your actual passing? Oh, I just died like everybody else. Mm. Yeah, but you must have found yourself somewhere in a garden or a room or... Why should I necessarily find myself in a garden? Or why, for that matter, should I necessarily find myself in a room? How embarrassing it would be to, for instance, wake up and find that you were Lady Cynthia's boudoir at a very inconvenient moment. <laughs> <laughs>
begin to merge, although they retain their individuality and separate personality, we all begin to merge until we are harmonious, and in consequence we live in a condition of peace and quietitude and harmony, where all and each can have his or her interests, such as they may be. Some feel the urge and need to work in various ways, others do not. I prefer to continue to write because writing was to a great extent my life, and I'm hoping to find a suitable instrument on your side, if I can, whose mind will be sufficiently open that I might be able to transmit new plays, new works, new things of interest which will help humanity and enlighten humanity. But always remember that the best way to reach a man's heart is not is not through his stomach, but to reach his heart is to realize that one must give to him something which is far removed from material things, something of the mind and of the spirit which will last through time itself. I feel that I could do a great deal, but I have yet to find a suitable instrument to do this work. Well, we hope you will find one, because your books I admire them very, very much. You did what you wrote. I won't embarrass you by asking you the name of one of them. But, uh, I, I, and I also read about the, your the, the, the trial, your trial too, you know, at the last, but I thought you didn't have a very fair trial. Thank you very much. Uh, well, it was very unfair, but just. Your yes. trial has been enacted several times. It, it, yes, I know, it has been the most highly successful part of my career. <laughs> <laughs> Well, have you any, oh, I suppose you've ever I find this so complicated, speaking to you, most irritating in a way. Oh. As if I can't get my mind clear all the time, there are stumbling blocks and hindrances. But no doubt I shall improve. Carry on, what did you wish to ask me? Um, I expect everybody has an impulse. You have some regrets, I suppose, of something that you didn't do while you were here. Oh, my first regret was that I didn't stay longer on your side. Oh, really? Well, of course. I still had desires, I still wanted to write further, I still wanted to reinstate myself, strange as it may seem, in human society. Mm -hmm. Not that I ever felt completely outside of it, but I was sufficiently vain to assume that I could recapture my old place in the world. But that's a long time ago. Since then I've changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anybody you would like to give a message to it. We'll go down on the tape, you see. I don't think there's anyone left on your side that I have any particular desire to interesting message to. Have you met Bernard Shaw, was I? Oh, I have met Shaw. Of course I've met Shaw. Mm -hmm. What a man. <laughs> That's sir. Yeah. Extraordinary character. Brilliant, if rather, well, I'd perhaps better not say these things. I'm supposed to be, to some extent, developed. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like on your side of the plane? Could you say something about that? And, uh, you mean Victoria? Mm -hmm. Yes, I thought. Your, your theatres and things like that, you've got theatres, haven't you? Where you like you still act, you know, there's still a plays on that side, and that's what oh, one still writes, one still yes. continues. Our world is, in some senses, as I no doubt you've heard, very similar to your earth. We have all the manner of scenery that you are accustomed to, even more beautiful. Nature, as you know, nature exists here. But the worser aspects or the more irritating aspects of nature are not non-existent to us. For instance, we don't have the pests such as flies, earwigs, and all the irritating things that nature concocts to annoy man. Those things seem to have disappeared, fortunately. 
We seem to have all the beauty and the loveliness of nature without all the petty irritants. Mm. No more swatting flies. Oh, I used to know a woman once who used to love sitting all the afternoon in a chair with a swatter. Mm. And she had a swatting afternoon. I often wonder what she must be doing here without a swatter, without a flies to swat. Mm. Oh, a long time ago, things have changed. I look at London, I hardly recognize it. Thank God I lived before my time. Yes, it's just changed. Yes, you won't recognize all the terrific tall buildings that are going on. I don't recognize hardly anything of London. And I'm so happy that I came as I did, and I departed as I did. I wouldn't mm. want to live in your London today. What are your buildings like in your, on your side? To be have all manner of buildings. Because the sphere in which I live, they are all elegant, great beauty. What, towns and cities? And uh, yes, you could call them cities. They are cities in which untold thousands of people live and have their habitat, but so different and yet in some ways so like the old. But, but you don't have cars and things like that up there, do you? No, thank goodness we do no. not have those machines. Horses we still have. Animals, pets, yes. much that meant so much to humanity, and humanity to some extent gave to in return, such as one's pet dog, one's pet horse, Animals are very near to humans. Unfortunately, humans are very often near to animals. I sometimes think the animals are more advanced than humans. Yes. At least yes, they I follow their that. natural instincts and they're yes. not, in consequence, considered to be doing anything morally or otherwise wrong. Human beings are always in trouble because they are trying desperately, often to fight their true selves. Man should be allowed to be his true self, because only by that can he hope to develop. I do not mean by that that crime as such should be recognized or, or in any way uh, assisted. But there should be some curb, that is true, by the law. But the law itself has such strange ways of working. It cannot understand the frailties, or if it does understand the frailties of the human, it often punishes unnecessarily. We must help each other, we must learn to be more kind, more tolerant. We must try always to put ourselves in the other person's place. Try to realize that we have a duty to others and that the only way we can hope to find our salvation is to be merciful and to be considerate and to give love. Do you ever house yourself being writing? Yes, I do. A very beautiful house. A house after my own heart. But then again, in a sense, I suppose it is because I myself created it without even realizing it. I was creating before I ever came here by my thoughts, by better thoughts. So with the garden and all that outside? I have a garden. Not too large, but sufficient. Yes. I was never one for the outdoor life. I appreciated nature, but I preferred to watch nature from a distance rather than to always be underneath her glaring yeah. light. One perceives often more clearly, more distinctly from the distance. I must go. I will come and talk to you again. Very nice to come. Thank you. Very nice to speak to you. And if sometimes I've seen it, it seemed it for acid, I've done it as much for your benefit oh, so yeah, that you yeah, might yeah, yeah. Very in well. some measure be of help to others. Thank because you. otherwise, if I'm not to some extent my own self, People will say that cannot be. Yes. So for your sakes I do this. But I can and will talk on the things that you wish me to speak about uh, in due course. May God bless you. That is the common thing to say, I believe, when you say goodbye, <laughs> spiritual sciences. May God bless you, my friends. I'll say it for the rest. Be one of them. Goodbye. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Bye-bye.